Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. So thank you for joining me today as I am about to crack open a shiny new copy of Seas of Havoc. This box here, this is a deck building worker placement game from Rock Manor Games. Um, this was originally kickstarted. This is the retail version of the game, specifically the Sea Monster Edition. You can kind of see here the Sea Monster Edition, which includes the base game and the Sea Monster expansion, but no Kickstarter exclusives or anything like that or upgraded components. Again, this is a mix of deck builder and worker placement game that looks really cool where you are using sloops to go to various islands to collect resources. And then you're doing a naval battle, battling your ships with broadsides and I don't think there's boarding parties in this one, but broadsides and trying to maneuver and hidden movement. It looks really neat. So first off, I do have to thank Rock Manor Games for sending this along. Um, that is greatly appreciated. Next step, though, is going to be to cut this open and take a look at what we get in the box for Seas of Havoc. So here you have my copy of Seas of Havoc. The only thing I've done at this point is cut the shrink off. Let's give everyone a quick look at the box. So we have the various box sides that just say Seas of Havoc pretty much on all the sides. And then we have the back. It's a heavy game. You can kind of see here, it just shows off some of the cards and the, the board and gives you an overview of play. Um, this is a one to five player hour long game, age 14 plus, which I think might be more to do with the fact they're worried about kids eating components than complexity of the game, but I haven't played to confirm it. So once I can get this lid off, we will look at what we got. Okay, there is gonna be some assembly required. I'm gonna leave this right on the edge and we're gonna take a look at what we have first is the Sea Monster expansion info. So as I said, this is the Sea Monster edition. So it does come with the, the Sea Monster expansion. So that's right on top. Fairly simple set of little rules for the Sea Monster. Then we get the captain's log. This looks neat. I don't know, but like there's a little checklist here to kind of check off who did each thing. So it's kind of like a make it a legacy game, get achievements. Yeah, get achievements. Possibly starting off as the treasure seeker, working your way off. Oh, these are the different captains. Okay, so I, I do know there are different captains you can pay. So when you play the Admiral, you can actually like mark who played it, what they did. So a neat little log there, kind of like I said, achievements. Then we get into the rule book, which we're just going to flip through fairly quickly here. I do dig the art, the, the comic book style. Nice layout, nice big text. I appreciate that. Uh, it talks about the two phases, the island phase where you're sending out your workers to get stuff, and then the sea phase where you're actually battling. Looks like a good overview of all the components here. There are six different player boards, how to set up the grid, how to set up the players. Um, lots of different variants. That's interesting. So two ship variant, team variant. Then we get to the core concepts of the game, buying things, what the market cards are, how your ships are going to move, how cannon fire works, some reminders, and then ending the game. We're looking at a total of 18 pages, but there was a lot of white space here. And then a whole thing that describes in detail the card anatomy. That's always appreciated. And then the rules for solo and co-op play, which is really cool to see in um, modern games. And a quick reference on the back, always appreciated. Now we're gonna get to some of the cardboard. And there is not as much, look, the board's the heaviest part. We're gonna open this up. So this game is a combination of worker placement and deck building. Everyone starts with their own unique deck. I don't know if the cards are the same, because again, I haven't played this yet. Um, your first turn part of the game is going to various islands and buying upgrades, which include buying new cards. So these are the sails. They look like ships wheels. They're going to track how many sails you've collected. One of the resources, another resource is coins. This is your coins. Um, the deluxe edition has nice upgraded ones. These are sunken ships that you can try to find. These are rocks you're going to have to avoid. On the back, you also have gusts of wind and whirlpool. They're going to affect your movement. If you move into a whirlpool, it turns your ship. If you move into a gust, it blows it. Um, these sunken ships keep renewing, and when you find one, you flip it over and see what resources you got. So you can see two of the resources I already showed you. The third is cannonballs, which we haven't seen yet. This really wants to punch itself, like stuff's falling out here. Then we get to the board. Oh, nice plastic insert here that kind of tells you where everything goes. We're going to put that to the side, though, to see if I can get the whole board in camera. I should be able to. Oh, pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, not quite the whole board. It's upside down. 
but you can see enough of it. So what you have here is the market is at the bottom. That's where your cards are going to go. These are the various islands you can put your workers on. There are some flags you can claim at the top. Other spots you can put your workers. And it's all very clear. If you go to the blacksmith, you get two cannons. You go to the sail maker, you get three sails. Then in here is where you're going to do all your fighting. Your, your ships are going to move around. It is a single-sided board. Nice matte finish. I appreciate that. You have no idea how reflective this the, the pot lights above me normally are. This is a good sign. All right, baggies. Always appreciate when a company gives you extra baggies. Okay, so this is the player board, which are two-layered, which is nice. Very nice. Somewhere in here will be places to uh, assemble these. But what I want to do, as I go back into the box, I prefer to play yellow. So I am going to grab the yellow wheel. So this would be in here. Your sails would be here. This would be your player board. Your captain slots in here. And then this would be attached. I'm sure there's some way to attach this. And you can spin this to track your sails and your cannonballs go in the cannon. So there's going to be six of those in the different player colors. Or sorry, they're not even player colors yet until I add the wheels on them. Six of those. So we have various cards here. We have larger decks of cards here. Larger deck of cards here. Wooden bits. Lots of wooden bits. Look at all these wooden bits. Holy cow. Dice. There's the cannonballs. Uh, and then the plastic pieces for assembling the player board. So we're going to go through these and I'm going to put them back into the box as I go. We're going to kind of put the box off to the side here. Uh, silica pack. If you live anywhere humid, keep this with your game. It will actually protect it. Otherwise, toss it out. So here we have some of the wooden components. There's the first player marker and the flags. I was not expecting these to be wood at all. So bonus, big bonus. So flags give you special abilities. You collect them. So in particular, the green flag here, as you can see it, um, lets you collect one of any resource. These are actually etched. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like laser cut. Just pretty impressive. Um, I don't remember what all the different sails do. So here's the one of the other sails, the red sail, and the blue sail. First player marker is a compass rose. Again, nice wood components here. We're going to toss these somewhere in here. Uh, no direction on how to actually store this. I am going to guess if you go online, there's probably somewhere that tells you what goes where. We're going to toss the star in there. Great. Plastic things for assembling the boards. I'm not going to bother with that right now. What I do want to show off are the cannonballs. So this is the cannonballs, and what I appreciate here, I don't know how well you can see that because it's tiny, is one side's flat. So when I put these on the table, they don't roll away, which is awesome. And they fit into the player board. So here you can see the player board. I'll we'll assume this was assembled. This would turn, and you track your cannonballs, which, okay, they do bounce, even if they don't roll. So here we have a cannonball inside. So here you go, cannonballs which I, I don't see a specific spot to put these, so we're just going to put them in there. Dice. All the dice are for is doing coordinates on the map. So when I had the board out, you saw there was, there was a grid. You roll them. They're, they're standard D6s. You don't need to see more of those. Let's get to some more wooden bits. These are your ships. Again, six different player colors. These are your ships. What I dig, and I didn't even notice at first until just now, and this is awesome, they're all unique. Despite being slightly unique shapes, they actually have... Oh, I grabbed a purple. There. Blue should work. Yes. Somewhat. Red and yellow. So each of these ships is wooden. They are only single-sided, though. So a wooden ship that you're going to stand up on the map. One per player. No clue where these are supposed to go, so I'm just tossing them in somewhere. These are your sloops. These are your workers for the worker placement part of the game. You get a whole bunch of little ships. Oh, man, and none of them like my blue screen. So I'm going to show you the red and yellow ships here. Red and yellow ships. Wooden ships. Infamy trackers. I've now learned my lesson, so I'm going to hold up just the red and the yellow. The little skulls on them, and again, these are like etched in. It's, it's like red painted wood, but then etched so you can see the wood through it. I appreciate that. These are also one-sided. One of those in every player color. 
this has got to be the Sea Monster expansion because I have no idea what's in this. I do do research before I do my unboxing, so I at least know what I'm talking about when I'm opening up the games. No, I haven't played it, but I've at least like done a demo, watched a video or something. So this is the Monster expansion, which, oh man, check it out. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. So you have shark fins, which look like shark fins, right? It's a shark fin. It's three of those. But check out Nessie here. Um, this may or may not work on here. No. So if you look, Nessie has humps. So I'm sure each hump goes in a different spot. Loch Ness monster looking creature. And then a giant squid. And again, its tentacles could go on different squares. How cool is that? Now this one I might be able to actually like, so you can see a squid with a tentacle here, which is just very cool. All right, what we have left are cards. These cards appear to be the expansion. I'm gonna save those for last. These should probably be the starting cards that each player gets, because again, this is a deck building game. Yeah, I'm not sure, no. This, these are cards you can purchase. So the card in here are very functional. Um, they're not like the prettiest cards I've ever seen in a card game before. Wow, am I getting white glare. White cards with white glare, I apologize. So if you have the flag, this goes off and this shows your ship movement at the top. These are all move straight cards based on the number of sails you have. So the deep cove. None of these have a cost on them. So these may actually be the starter cards. Let's get to the main chunk of cards here. All right, here we actually have your starter cards. I found them. So here are the starting cards for the green deck, which I'm not going to show off. We have the starting cards for the red player, the teal player, the yellow player, the purple player, and the blue player. So here we have the six different decks, starting decks for each of the, the, the various player colors. So here's an example of the red deck, one of their basic cards. Now what this one is going to let them do is fire cannons to the left and right. This card also is a fire cannons left and right. This is going to be a move forward and turn left or right. This is also, so it looks like two of each of these. And then we have two move forward ones. So your starting deck, all you can do is move forward, move forward and turn, or fire left and right, fire broadsides. Now, once you go shopping for cards, you'll be able to get other things that let you do things like, let's go through some of these. These are fired twice to each side or move forward in turn or use sails to move forward two in turn or move forward one and fire broadsides. So you can see how you improve your deck to get more maneuverable and more attacks you can make. And that is the base of the game. So I've got to say, I'm so-so on this card design. I, I just, I, when I'm playing a deck builder, I expect to see fancy, pretty artwork, right? None of that here. This is all just very functional. That said, this is all very functional. It's very easy to tell what each card does. So that is a whole number of cards. Like, look at this. This is a really powerful card because it's move forward, turn, and then fire. Some of these cards are also worth infinity at the end of the game, marked by that symbol. So those are the purchasing cards, and I think we're going to have some more here. So we're going to take a quick look at these as well. This is your damage deck. When your ship is damaged, you're going to take one of these cards. The deck is set by the uh, set number based on the number of players. And of course, these are minus one point in your deck. So they clog up your deck. They're minus points at the end of the game. Anyone who's played Dominion will understand those as curses. Then we have a bunch of special ability cards with great looking art on it and player reference cards and solo co-op reference cards. So a bunch of reference cards. I'm not going to get into the details. So you have a bunch of reference cards here, um, including explaining the scoring as well. So these should be your captains and so on. So here we have, if you were playing red, you will get these two abilities that you have to upgrade to be able to use. So this describes them. So one of the other things that do dig about this game is there is a symmetry. The red player gets different abilities. These actually have some really nice artwork on them. 
And then here's some of the blue player's abilities. And then there are abilities for each of the different player colors. Then we have a number of captains that you get to choose from, which are here. And again, the artwork here makes up for the fact there wasn't a lot of art on the other cards. So we have various captains, and each captain is going to have two cards that go with them. So, for example, here is the Pirate Queen. We would find the Pirate Queen's cards, which are here. Rally the Flag and Extortion. If you are playing the Pirate Queen, you would slot this into your player board, like so. And then you would add these two cards to your deck. And, of course, there are two cards for each of those various pirates with awesome artwork on them. And then now we have one last thing to open up as I slide the Pirate Queen out here. Now we have these. From what I understand, these are the expansion cards, and now we don't need this anymore. So we're going to take a quick look at the expansion card, and I already see some tentacles. So we have various tentacle cards and flailing limbs card. These obviously all go to the Kraken. So these are all Kraken cards which on the back show a Kraken. Uh, this is mostly blue, so it's not going to look good on my, on my green screen. I should have switched to a green screen instead of a blue screen for this. I should have realized. It's called Seas. So various Kraken abilities. Then, oh, I think we have two more heroes. Yeah, it looks like we have two more heroes. The Monster Hunter and the Sea Witch. I can probably show that one actually off. Then we have the Shark. And again, there are a bunch of shark cards. It looks like the shark's going to attack the islands or something, or be outside the islands. These should be the special cards for those new characters. Yes, they are. So these are the cards that would add the asymmetry that would go into your decks. I'm going to actually sort those with the characters. So when I actually do go to play, it's easier. And then we have the Sea Serpent or Nessie deck as well. And all the things on there with what Nessie does. Very cool. Didn't even realize all that was coming in here. So I have made a mess of this box, and I don't care. I'm just going to put this stuff back in a group so I can find it later. And curse myself when I sit down to play Seas of Havoc. And as I mentioned about this wanting to punch itself, you can see stuff has fallen out since I unboxed this. That looks pretty cool. I gotta say, that looks impressive. Deck building and naval combat. Interesting mix. I am generally a fan of the combination of deck builders with board game elements of various things. So there you have what you get inside a copy of Seas of Havoc from Rock Manor Games. A worker placement deck building game. Go through the island phase, replace workers to get stuff, and then you battle your ships. It is a naval combat game where the goal is to wipe out the other player's ships. Um, though, note there is no player elimination. It's just based on getting damage cards. The more damage cards you have, the more points you lose at the end, and the game ends when the deck of damage cards runs out. So no player elimination. We have a, a naval combat game using deck building mechanics where your, your cards are going to be how your ships moves. Uh, this looks fascinating to me. Um, really looking forward to checking this out. I'm a big fan of deck building and worker placement, though I'm not. A, I, I don't really own a lot of naval games. Uh, most of my naval board gaming experience goes back to old games workshop days. So that'll be interesting to check out. Now, when I do start playing this, I will be sharing my thoughts on social media, tabletop bellhop everywhere, every one word everywhere, tabletop bellhop, one word everywhere. I'll be sharing pictures on Instagram, um, on Twitter, if it's still there by the time I start playing this game, um, as well as on the Tabletop Bellhop blog, tabletopbellhop.com, and on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. Thank you for checking out Seas of Havoc Sea Monster Edition from Rock Manor Games with me.